Hello, this is Todd Money and Webb Anholtz. We're with Landmark Implement. Today I'm be going over with you operation of the F4365 dry box applicator air boom. This one we have configured with three bins, two main product bins of urea and a PK blend, and a micronutrient bin with sulfur. Just like any other application system, we're going to go into our setup. And it shows our client farm field, our operator. We can fill in conditions. If we want to do temperature, wind, wind direction, sky conditions, we can fill that in. And our equipment is a dry spreader. Like I said earlier, we have three bins in this air boom. Today we're doing urea a PK blend, and a micronutrient sulfur blend. We also have the ability of chaining bins one and two together. If you have one product such as urea, we could use both bins to apply urea and chain them together. And I'll show you how to do that here in a little bit. Here's our rates. We can select three individual rates to toggle back and forth on. And we can also spread different rates of each of the three products all at the same time. Rate one, two, and three. Our track spacing is set at 70 feet, which is our boom width. And our fan RPM speed is set at 4,000. That's a great place to start. Uh, you can go higher, but 4,000 is adequate to blow the product out of the machine. Sometimes we're seeing extended wear on the blower fan. If we have uh, 4,500 RPM and higher, it just spins that fan faster than it needs to, and we get some wearing in the shell of the fan in the back. So 4,000 is adequate for what we're doing. Next, under our dry application system icon, we have our products, our rates that we want to do, and then here are the densities. So if your PK blend density changes during the day, you would go to the density. And then you could go into product density and change that. It's very important because on our calibrations, we're calibrating CFR. That's cubic feet per revolution. So every cubic foot of product the weight that is distributed depends on its density. For example, urea is only 50 pounds when we actually weigh the density. So it has a different density than the PK blend, which would be higher of 62. That's something you want to measure every load to keep it consistent and keep your applications accurate. Also in this bin detail screen, we have our product bin counter. And it's a, a little different place to think about it, but this is where we will go in to roll and unroll our tarp. So the interesting thing on the tarp is that we have to open and close it through the display. So we go into dry application system. We're gonna go to the procedures here. And this is where our tarp roll is and close it. You have to hold down on it. Until it's closed. And notice it gives you a warning ensure that the ladder is folded up and latched before operating tarp. But with that switch it won't allow you, it kicks you out so you can't ruin it if everything is working correctly. And that is how we roll the tarp. The other things we can do here under procedures is that when we have the hydraulics on, we can purge our belts. Right now it's grayed out because I don't have the machine running, but if the machine was running and the hydraulic pump was applied, you could purge your belts. So we had product back to the, the distributor before we started our field. Uh, also same similar as prime controls. This is like um, 
quick start on a planter, it gets product out to the booms. So when you begin the field, you have all the product where it needs to be to start the field. But once again, our hydraulics have to be enabled to do that. Now we'll go in on how to chain the bends. We're gonna simulate that we're gonna put urea in both bin one and bin two. Right now they have two different products in them. So we're gonna exit out of here. Go back to this dry application system screen and click on bin, set the bin configuration. Now we're gonna change bin two to urea. And when we go into our densities, both bin one and bin two have the same product. We can click on our density and it will allow us to chain them together. We go into dry application system. And so just like our liquid machines, anytime you have an arrow in the dot, there's more information. So this is the one that gets people is this disable coverage mapping when bin is empty. So what that does is if the low bin alarm comes on, it's gonna stop your product mapping. But we still might have a little bit of product in a bin that we can run out, and then we're not leaving a skip. So we would shut this off to disable coverage mapping when bin is empty. So we're still covering, we're still spreading, but we're just getting the last little bit out of that bin. And that goes back to bin chaining. So if we have the same product in both bin one and two, we can touch on bin one. So the same products are in there. Go back into the dry application system. And we touch on the density, then we can chain the two large bins together. You can chain it one to two auto or two to one auto. So when bin two gets empty down to the low level sensor, it automatically switches to bin one and keeps going. On the bin chaining, I like to use the bin two to one auto because it'll empty bin two, but we can't see bin two when that goes below the sensor. But bin one, when it moves to bin one, there's a window behind the seat that we can look into the bin one and see that, that physically there's no product left. The other cool feature we have here is through our cameras, our applications, video cameras, we can set our cameras. Camera one is looking inside bin one. Camera two is looking inside bin two. So we can set a trigger edit trigger. So when bin one is low, it's going to turn on camera one. So we can kind of, hey, by the way, you're getting low. Here's a flash as a picture of the bin so you know that you still have a little bit left in there. So that's a cool feature on the cameras that we set up in there. We'll talk a little bit about the calibration process. We won't be able to complete it because this is a simulator. It requires you to have your engine running 1800 RPM. We dispense product into a, we usually use a seed tender or a seed tote to catch it and then weigh it on a pallet scale. But when we deliver your machine, uh, we will calibrate your bins one, two, and your micro bin and show you how the process works. Uh, but if you wanted to calibrate for a different product later on, this is kind of the gist of how you would do that. So we go into our main menu, back into our dry application system, and underneath our density again, we have the CFR value, and we can go into start calibration. So we would begin calibration. It's gonna ask you how much you wanna dispense, and typically we like to dispense 500 pounds of product. And then you would hit begin, uh, we'd ramp up the engine to 1800 RPM and then hit the application button on the joystick to dispense what it thinks is 500 pounds. And at the end of that, 
we weigh what we actually dispensed into the seed tender and come up with the CFR with what, after what we actually caught. And we do that a couple times to dial in that CFR from what we catch and what we thought it caught to get the actual CFR. It's quite a simple process, uh, but that's how we do that. Another thing I want to address is on our rates. So on our bin one and two, for example, quite a bit of our applications are prescriptions. So if we have a prescription, we'd go into the bins or product that we were applying. And instead of target rate, like 100, 200 pounds, we'd go into controller rate and select the RX. And then we'd have to pick an RX out of our file to convert our min max test product rx file and then we save it and we're going to look for that rx instead of the controller rate so that's how you would do a prescription on the dry machine then if we go into our map we can see what the rates were be in the different parts of the field in our coverage map. And we can look at coverage, what we apply, versus the prescription rate in our mapping in the background. 